Welcome, in this tutorial we are going to create a disk with lots of holes inside. So let's create a new document and set the default object color to 80% gray. We start off with a disk and can zoom there by pressing H. And we should also make sure to go display grow shading lines so we can see the actual edges. Next I'm going to set the inner radius to 50 to make sure I get rather squarish shapes. I also set the rotational segments to 32. In order to get some holes in there I will create an extra object based on a disk and I call it hole. Now this doesn't need to be that big so I say 2 by 4 and we can zoom there by pressing O. Now we see the disk doesn't need that many segments, we just set it to 1 by 8 <clears throat> which will result in a perfect circle later on. Let's press H again to zoom back so we see both objects in conjunction and the idea is now to um, just place the holes just inside those polygons. In order to make our job a little easier, we will take the big disk and memorize 32, which will we use in the horizontal rotation here. So we say 360 divided by 32 and multiply this by 0.5. So that way our um, polygons here are sitting right on the center line. I don't need the grid display for now. I will instead increase the subdivision of my big disk. So I will multiply the disk and the rotational segments by two. That way I have center crossings, if you like, and we will just place the hole right on top of those. So let's enable snap and make sure vertex snapping is activated. Now I will just drag the circle along the blue arrow and make sure it snaps in our first field. And now you move it again, hold down control to create a copy and release. Move it, hold down control and release. And we will repeat this until every field is filled like that. Now we go to the disk, we can deactivate snapping and convert it. Now I click on the right the center here, right click and say inner extrude and extrude inwards just a bit so it doesn't touch the whole pieces. Next I repeat this step for the other two fields. We can also use extrude inner here in our history list and hit apply. We can delete those inner fields and um, now you will see that there are some floating points in the center due to deleting the polygons so we just say optimize to get rid of those. Next we select everything, right click and say connect objects and um, now in order to connect those we um, could try to use closed polygon holes but it's not going to work so it's probably safer to just say we go to mesh create tools polygon pen and just move them together you can also use in-between techniques like bridging two edges and then the closed polygon approach would work but I think it's still doable um, by hand without losing too much time. So you don't need to click twice, you can just smear opposing points from one edge to the other 
And the strategy behind this should always be, let me just show you before everything is gone. Um, you would also always um, count edges. So I have eight edges here and eight edges on the other side. And if this useful information is not displayed to you, you would just go to mode, view settings, and go to HUD and make sure those um, items are activated. But now let's go back to point mode, use the polygon pen and finish our work. All right, now that we're done, we just look at it from top. I pressed F2, but you can also change the view here or click inside here to change the view. I'll make also sure to get exactly the same view by going to display grow shading lines and wireframes so it's less confusing. And now I just want to keep the slice we worked on. So I go to polygon selection, just select the slice. and um, by pressing S you can zoom there and now we're going to select invert and delete. Now in order to copy those slices around we can use the array. Just make sure your hole is selected. You hold down Alt and click on array and now in order to move them together you will set the radius to zero and the number of copies is the number of your uh, segments minus one. So 32 minus one in my case will bring uh, the full disk back. Now this is quite a nice pattern, but um, it has some internal problems. Um, those segments or slices are not connected yet. So we take a connect object and make sure they don't fall apart later. <clears throat> I can show you the difference if we set up a subdiv real quick. You will see that it holds its circular shape with the connection, but it gets some yeah, some gaps without it. Okay, let's um go back until the subdiv is gone again because we don't need it yet. And first of all, you can, as long as the object is flat, you can do some deformations on it if you like. I was thinking of using uh, the Sverify deformer, which um, we can set to the same size, radius 100, strength 100. And if we cannot put it underneath the object, we can still put it in a, a common null object. And just make sure you put this verify deformer downwards so you get this um, nice bend surface, like so. <clears throat> now, what we can add to this is um, a bit of thickness. So there's a, under simulate, there's a cloth surface, which basically does procedural extrusion. We set the subdivisions to zero and the thickness to one. And um, now there's one more thing we need before we can put this into a subdivision object, namely we need some beveled edges because if we were to do it now you will see that it's getting way too round and especially if you look at it without edges you see that also those edges are a little bit corrupted due to the topology here. You'll see that, that this is not very stable it goes inwards at those sections. So what do we do before we use subdivision is we are going to use a bevel deformer, 
put this into a common null object again. And you can see the bevel is overshooting quite a lot. So let's just reduce this to 0.1 and also just use it on real edges and not on everything. So I use an angle of 60 degrees or so. And now let's pay some attention on those parts here. You can see that this kind of triangle-ish quad will not look good when subdivided. So I can just show it to you. Um, we can do better than that by going to solid mode, which does a really good job on those parts here. Let's just compare it real quick. Camphor was making it actual round, but solid is made for subdividing later. And in order to get rid of this specific problem, we can set the mitering to uniform. That way we get a solid round edge all around the big hole. And then it's safe to say subdivide. Let's look at it in isoparms mode. You can see the edges are really, really nice and stable. And when you go to display row shading, you can see it, see it in pure quality.